Black girls are among the most significant cultural producers, community connectors, and trendsetters, but rarely are their contributions recognized or appreciated. At best, they remain invisible in our public discourse, or people assume that all black girls are doing fine and are resilient enough to overcome any structural obstacles put in their way. Those aren't my words. They come from the folks behind next week's Black Girl Movement, a national conference. It starts April 7th at Columbia University, but here right now to tell us more is a member of the conference organizing committee. She's Sidra Sebastian, who also is the associate executive director at the Brotherhood Sister Soul, a nonprofit group that works with young people. Welcome to BK Live. Thank you for having me. So I admit it already. Those aren't my words, but I certainly echo some of those sentiments. It was a powerful statement. And how are you guys coming at all of that in the conference? Yeah, so thanks again for having me here. And a big part of the reason why it's a three day conference, because there's so much to say and so much to listen to. At least and three so, days. right, the reason why we've come together is to really center these girls, right? So, mm -hmm. girls from throughout the black diaspora, what that means to them, right? They're not just going to be the people that we're speaking to, but mm -hmm. the folks that we're hearing from. So they're on the panels talking about research that they've been doing, talking about activism that they've been doing on their behalf and the behalf of people of color across genders, as well as highlighting their art. Mm -hmm. So it's really a big deal for us to be here and presenting it at the conference organizers, centering those girls and also having created a space for them to speak for themselves as well. Okay, Cedra, here at Brick House, we've hosted a stoop series on black women and their representation in the media. Mm -hmm. We certainly got into black women and how they've been unduly impacted by the prison industrial complex and mass incarceration. So in your view, you're on the organizing committee. What should we do for triage? Where is the most need right now as it relates to black women? Yeah, I think there's so many different spaces, right, that we can start doing some of this work that's much needed. Mm -hmm. And a big part of it is listening to black girls. Mm -hmm. And I think, again, that's so important of the conference. It's about us taking the time to listen to black girls, to say, we hear you, we see you, tell us what you want and what mm -hmm. you need. And that's a big part of the work that we do at the Brotherhood Sister Soul. While we have curriculum and an amazing staff that are doing the work, we are also listening to our young people. Tell us what you need. Tell us what you want to see get done. How mm -hmm. can we support you? I think too often we think that young people need to be told what they need to do mm -hmm. when they have a great deal of assets that they can bring to the table and to share. Yeah. And so the conference is really a space to listen to black girls as well as to share what we think um, from our expertise as professors, as artists, as nonprofit organizers um, to say this is what we see on our end as well. I think one of the things to mention right now is thinking about what's happening with our girls as far as school pushouts. Mm -hmm. um, Monique Morris has written a great book called Push Out, Girls for Gender Equity, which is based in Brooklyn, has been doing phenomenal work around girls push out and what that looks like and the impact on young women looking at issues around mass incarceration. There are organizations who are doing that work and girls who are organizing in those areas as well, and young women who are stepping up to the plate who are also doing organizing around police interactions with young people and how that impacts black girls and girls of color as well in New York City. Well, you spoke about some of those professors and authors who yes. are doing the work every day working with your organization. But let's talk right now about the folks who are coming out for the three-day conference. You yeah. got some heavy hitters. Yes. Yeah, so we have some amazing folks who are coming out, both from Columbia University, from Fordham. Like I said, Monique Morris will be participating. There will be folks who will be participating on the front of philanthropy. So there's going to be a great conversation around philanthropy and research on Friday. Mm -hmm. The day that I'm personally most excited about is Saturday. Okay. Because Saturday is the day for the girls. All right. And so all of the workshops that are going to be there are for the young women who are coming, 18 and under. Some of the activities are facilitated by their own peers. So that's going to be awesome. Some of them are intergenerational, mm -hmm. and it'll really be a space for the young people to shine. So I'm really excited about Saturday. So speaking about the space to shine, you guys have underlined the fact that this is open to the girls, and you m painted that very broadly. You are being very inclusive and celebratory yeah. of everyone on the spectrum. 
Yeah, absolutely. And it's really important to us that we talk about what girlhood means, mm -hmm. right? And specifically girlhood as a black girl and a girl of color. So we're having conversations about gender fluidity and identity. We're having conversations about what it means to be black, what it means to be Afro-Latina, what it means to be black with roots in other spaces. So we're okay. making all those connections as well. And because it's the first national conference of its kind, mm -hmm. we know we carry a lot of weight to do it well. Right. And to to hit on those different spaces and really look forward to what happens afterwards in the spaces this creates to make it an annual conference, okay. uh, to connect with people beyond next weekend, and to really build around work that people are doing, not just in Brooklyn and mm -hmm. New York City and Harlem, but throughout the nation, and how we can bring our collaborative efforts together to really focus on our girls. All that intersectionality yes. is making some of the ancestors very happy yes. and some of the people who are doing the work here very happy. So when you come into Brooklyn? <laughs> we would love to come to Brooklyn. Okay. Maybe 2017, we can host it in Brooklyn. That we'll be number awesome. two for you guys. <laughs> so you gave it up to Columbia and you will be number two next year. Yeah. So what are the needs looking forward? How can we help you to help these girls in their pursuits and moving forward with the work you yeah. do all year and for the conference? Specifically for the conference, an amazing thing has happened, which is that we are booked mm -hmm. solid, which is amazing. Right. And I think when um, the other folks on the planning committee, when we came together two years ago, mm -hmm. we envisioned it being powerful and lots of folks showing up, but we are sold out, uh, okay. which is awesome. So we're running out of time, so I want to make sure we inject this piece. It's sold out, you can't get in, but what can we do? Those we'll of us- We'll be doing some live streaming. Okay. People can interact with us via awesome. Twitter. We're going to be having lots of social media presence. There'll be an opportunity for folks to stay connected from the website. Site Very cool. Beyond the conference. So, what can those of us who aren't black girls do to help the movement? I think one, listen. Two, get in where you fit in. There's mm -hmm. so many awesome organizations that are doing work with black girls. Yeah. The Brotherhood Sister Soul, Girls for Gender Equity in Chicago, the Tillett Sisters who are running a long walk home, using arts and activism to get young women to heal from sexual violence experiences. Mm -hmm. So there's so many ways that people can get into fit in, from volunteering to cutting checks to creating spaces to really center our girls. All right, so on the policy side, should we be ringing up any local congressmen or city council people? Well, a couple of things locally that are happening on the policy side, the, the Young Women's Initiative, which mm -hmm. was pulled together by the Speaker of the City Council and many of the folks who are partnering to sponsor the event are members of that as well on the steering committee. And it's really looking at how we can develop New York City in a way that's really supporting girls of color. How is it that we're centering them and elevating opportunities for them in the spheres of education, um, looking at reduction of violence, creating opportunities for them in their post-secondary experiences. So that's something that's happening on the local level. And there's definitely potential to think about what that means for a national initiative as well. Okay, phenomenal. I know our city council member locally, Lori Cumbo, head of the Women's Committee on the yes. city council, has been out front on a lot of these issues. So just in closing, we know you guys are sold out, but tell us again if there's any hashtags yeah, or so emails or Tons of ways to show. connect social media, um, Black Girls Movement, um, hashtag BGM. 2016. Gotcha. Um, folks can go to the website that is being hosted by IRAS, um, Institute for Research in Africana, African American Studies at Columbia. Um, yeah, and follow us on the Twitter, on the Facebook, okay. um, and stay connected. And we really look forward to what's coming up next week and the potential for it in the years to come. Phenomenal. So some of that black girl magic can rub off even if you're not one of them. You can connect. <laughs> Good luck with that conference. Thank you so and maybe much, we'll Brian. see you here next year. That would be awesome.